Hi, this is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com and today I want to talk about idle control setup in the MS3 series of ECUs. This includes the AMP EFI Pro Series ECUs and I want to note that most ECUs have a similar setup although every ECU has slightly different screens but just remember the logic is the same no matter what you're tuning I want to make a couple of basic assumptions. One is that you watched my previous two videos, basic idle control and fixing a rolling or hunting idle, where I used the timing table to adjust a hunting idle. And you also saw my idle control using timing and an idle air controller or IAC. Basically, it was a demo of how this works. In my first video, I showed you how ignition timing could affect RPM. Basically, if you add timing, your RPM will come up. And if you subtract timing, you can pull a little torque out of the motor and the RPM will come down. I also demonstrated in the second video how you can use an idle air controller to basically do the same thing, where there's a range where the idle air controller doesn't have much effect, but then in this case, at about 24, 25 degrees, 26 degrees, I get a steady gain in RPM as I go to a higher and higher PWM idle duty. Depending on the type of idle air controller you have, that might be considered IAC steps. It just depends on if you're running a two wire or a four or six wire idle air controller basically a stepper motor. So when we get into the software, the fourth tab over is startup and idle. And down at the bottom in the red box here is all of the settings. And as you turn some of these on, other ones will turn from gray to black. So let's do these one at a time. The first one is idle control. And what I did on my particular motor, I do have a PWM idle valve, two or three wire. We have the choices of no idle valve whatsoever, on-off valve, PWM valve, or a stepper motor, which is typically four or six wires. When I hit two wire, the green box on the right will turn from gray to black, and there's where the settings will pop in. If I choose stepper valve, basically the values on the right are no longer in effect, and the ones on the left, with the green box, are the ones we're working with. Today I'm going to be just demonstrating the two wire version. So now, once you've chosen two wire version, and this is the same box I had open just a minute ago, but what I've got is Mega Log Viewer in the background. This is the same log I was doing in the second video. I also want you to hit algorithm closed loop. On the right side, we have a crank to run taper time of three that's seconds. And what we're looking at is the motor is cranking. Actually, this is where I hit the starter button. The motor is registering RPM, about 200 RPM. Then it jumps up to about 1600 RPM and settles in. Once it settles in, three seconds later after the motor goes from crank to run, the idle air controller will take over and stabilize the idle. The next screen we're going to deal with is the idle cranking duty steps. Basically what this is, is for any given temperature, there's an idle air controller duty cycle that will give you a good clean start. And I found from my previous testing that this motor on a cold day, it's about 45% duty cycle. On a hot start, 30% duty cycle is plenty. And we can see this happens to be a cold start at about 79 degrees water temperature. So it parked the idle air controller at 41% duty cycle. I got a good clean start and then it settled on in. The next setting screen, we're going to go to startup and idle, come down to idle advanced settings and this screen will pop up. For now, what I want you to do is set idle advance on off to off. The next box down is idle RPM timing correction. I want to turn that on. Once you turn that on, what we'll do is hit engine state on, 
And we'll also set up a coolant temperature of what temperature do you want this to set in and how many seconds delay so that it does not pop in and out just in case you happen to be right on the edge of say one degree throttle position you will not be oscillating back and forth it'll give it just a little bit of delay here is the engine state settings the easiest way to find that is in the top right corner just put in engine states and you'll see the menu pop up here is where I say one degree throttle. Anything above one degree throttle, we're out of idle state. Below, we are in idle state. If the motor is running, you will see down at the bottom these green lights. Basically, those are the things that are currently active. And in the case of engine states, you can also see it there. Here is our closed loop idle target RPM. This curve which you feed in, basically what I've done is I say, I want about a thousand RPM, here it is right here, when the motor is fully warmed up. When it's cold, I want about 1400 RPM, and I want to taper it down. And if you notice, when I started the motor, the RPM came up and then it settled into my thousand RPM. It's basically this curve and this curve, the white one at the top, are exactly the same curves as the red arrow indicates. Also notice at right here at the vertical line, I'm about oh, 30 seconds into the idle and it's running 105 degrees water temperature and 1224 RPM. And it's exactly what we would have wanted. Also notice where the white vertical line is, we are running right at 105 degrees. And sure enough, if you look up 105 degrees, we should get about 1225 RPM and what we actually got was 1224. So it's doing exactly what we told it to do. The next curve I wanna set is the idle RPM timing correction curve. What this does is anytime that the motor is dead on exactly the RPM delta, that's the RPM that you're getting compared to what your target curve was in the previous screen, I want no timing change. But if you end up with a 100 RPM high, it pulls 6 degrees timing. If you're 100 RPM low, it adds 2 degrees, trying to pull up the RPM. This basically, from end to end, sets the range for the idle correction advance. In this particular screenshot, what I was doing is I had a nice steady idle. I was just leaving the motor alone. I came over to the power steering and pulled on the steering. Basically, putting a little load on the motor. That could be the alternator doing that. It could have been a air conditioner cycling in and out. But every time it hits, you can see where it adds timing and the PWM idle duty comes up. You will literally have to play with these settings to get your motor to behave the way you want it to. Here we are back to the curve where we did with testing in the second video. And I want to see about 30% duty cycle at idle on a hot start. I want it to be about 32, 33% duty cycle. And on a cold start, I want to be up around 40 or 42. So here's the, one of the later screens we have to set up. It's called the closed loop idle settings. The first one is the 25% duty cycle that we got from testing. The high end is 50% duty cycle. And again, that's coming from this curve where 50 is as high as we ever go and where 25% duty cycle is about as low as we ever use with my idle air controller and 50 is about as high as you would ever use. So that's the 25 and 50 here. The dash pot, what this is, is a setting I'll show you later. But what it does is basically softens the motor coming from high RPM down to idle to get it to approach in a little more gently. I also want to use initial value table. Let's the ECU guess what's the best place to park the idle air controller given RPM. I also want to set the open valve at wide open throttle to off. I want to leave the valve closed. In my case, after I get to about 3000 RPM, I don't want to mess with the idle air controller. Other settings is tuning mode, 
I would have set that to advanced. Basically what that does is opens up the PID settings down here. This is a little bit of a hybrid uh, PID setup. It's not exactly the same as the rest of the code throughout the uh, ECU. The reason I say that is there's a setting over here, PID control interval. What this does is runs the PID loop calculation every 200 milliseconds. It just slows down this calculation to kill the hunting because you don't want the PID idle air controller making big jumps all the time. This number, we have the option to go as low as zero and as high as 200. Zero means make no adjustments at all. That's not the right answer. 100 is the default, and that seems to work in most situations. The integral gain is basically a little bit of a shock absorber, so to speak, to slow this attack rate so it doesn't overshoot. Again, 100, 100 is the default, and it works about right. The last table we need to adjust is the closed loop initial values, idle initial values, where I did my testing at about 80 degrees intake air temperature, and I found at 1,000 RPM, I needed about 30, maybe 29. If I'm at about 2,000 RPM, I want to park the idle air controller at about 50%. And what I did was just used this blend to go from here to the 30, make that linear, kind of guessed at what's the lowest I want to park it at. If I'm at 800 RPM, I don't ever really get there. And then as the intake air temperature is colder, you might want to have the target a couple of percent less all the way through. And if the intake air temperature is high because the density of the air is thinner, you might have to open the valve up a little bit. Again, this is one of those things you just have to play with the numbers to see what your motor wants. I want to thank my friends at TunerStudio.com. These are the developers of Mega Log Viewer HD. It's the software I use for almost all of these motors that I'm tuning. And should you have the desire to keep me motivated, you can you can always go to paypal.me slash how EFI works. Thank you for watching.